Man, I still love it. I, I love when people bring it up. People talk to me about it, and I'll, I'll at my work now. You know, people. I'll introduce myself, and somebody I'm working with introduced me. Uh, they'll say, "Oh yeah, Kevin Herring. You know, you, you played basketball with Brother Rice. Oh, I was at that Simeon game. Man, that was the best. That was the best basketball game I've ever been at." And I say, "Yeah, that's the best basketball game I've ever been at too." And luckily, I was I was a part of it. It's been fun to go back and rewatch it now, being you know 15 years ago uh, from when it happened. It's it, it is. You know, it is crazy. Just, just, just all the memories and stuff that you have from watching it. But the the crowd and the the, the build up going into the game. But then, yeah, they were obviously a very talented team. Uh, well, everybody in the school was really excited. I remember people scrambling for tickets, and we thought we were going to win. We had a really confident team. We were a good team. Played a lot of good teams all year, so we we were pretty confident and knew it would be a tough game. But we thought we were going to win. I mean, obviously, it was a bigger game than, than we had played all year. Um, but other than that, it was business as usual. I mean, Pat kept the practice. He, he might actually – we might have went shorter than usual for this because he knew we were so jacked up. He didn't, he didn't really need to tell us anything. We worked all year for this. Obviously, we spent more time ga game planning for their star players. But, I mean, it was business as usual and – we were we were all in it for each other, so it, there was nothing uh, nothing out of the ordinary there. On March 11, 2005, the Brother Rice Crusaders and Simeon Wolverine met in an IHSA sectional final at Saint Xavier University. The game was a rematch of the previous year, where Simeon defeated Brother Rice 52 to 42, a matchup that was eagerly anticipated by high school basketball fans all over the state. Simeon's Derek Rose and Brother Rice's Bobby Frazier. The only question was, would the game live up to the hype? Watched the game film. Derek Rose picked up Frazier full court the entire game from the fir from the opening tip to the minute he fouled out. Things did not start well for the Crusaders, who trailed 9-2 to to begin the game. After Coach Pat Richardson called a timeout to settle his team down, Kevin Harrigan connected on a three-pointer.
Then Bobby Frazier hit a runner in the lane. Suddenly, the Crusaders were back in the game. We were down five. They had the ball at the end of the quarter, time running out. Derrick Rose hit a three, and then we had the ball stolen, and they went in for a layup at the buzzer. So they scored five points in the last eight seconds of the quarter. So instead of going in uh, to the second quarter down five, we were down, or down four, we were down nine. So uh, that would be the, end of the way the quarter ended, which was not good for us. From on tape, it looked like uh, it was a box out call that that one of our guys, you know, maybe he thought was a good box out and probably was, and they called an, uh, an over the back foul. And it seemed like the refs were calling a lot that game. You know, there were a million free throws shot if you sit there and watch the, the entire game. But yeah, you know, coach probably voiced his displeasure with the call and then didn't let it go. And the second quarter started just as rocky as the first for the Crusaders, with Coach Richardson receiving a technical foul right off the bat. The Wolverine dominated the ball for the most of the second quarter en route to a 28-14 lead. Brother Rice's famed motion offense was not producing many points, but Adam Gregorio's back-to-back -back layups cut the Wolverine lead down to 10. At halftime, Simeon led by a score of 30-18. With possibly only 16 minutes left in their season, the Crusaders needed to regroup and prepare for the second half. I remember uh, telling them that we can't let them go on another big run. They were a team that could score a lot of points in a little bit of time, and we felt like uh, we couldn't let them go on another. I didn't think we could recover if we let that happen again. The Crusaders came out of the break trailing, but an early Frazier three-pointer set the tone for the second half. Kevin Harrigan followed up Frazier's three by hitting two of his own to cut the lead down to three, getting the Crazies back into the game. Despite the strong start to the second half, the Crusaders knew that it would be a long game. After Simeon pushed his lead out to 41 to 33 late in the third quarter, free throws by Frazier and Sequist trimmed the lead to 43-38 heading into the fourth. Trailing by five going into the final quarter of play, the Crusaders had plenty of time to get back into the game.
After seven minutes of back and forth play, a Simeon layup by Tim Flowers gave the Wolverine a four point lead with just over a minute to go. Frazier then flew down the floor in transition and missed a mid range jumper, but Sequist grabbed the rebound and was fouled by Rose. It was Rose's fifth foul. Sequist went to the line with 39 seconds left. He split two free throws, trimming Simeon's lead to three. After Randall Hampton missed both foul shots, Rice came down the floor looking to tie the game. Frazier dribbled hard to his right, and as he went to hand the ball off to Kevin Harrigan, he was called for an offensive foul. It was Frazier's fifth foul, and like Rose, would watch the rest of the game from the bench. I didn't like the call. You know, I, I thought uh, you know, I just had my arm up protecting the ball as I dribble in, and I came to a stop, and it kid maybe flopped a little bit, looked looked like I pushed off, but uh, I don't think I, it was it was aggressive by any means. And then, so my fifth foul was an offensive foul. Uh, right in front of our bench, and you know, I'm devastated, thinking, you know, you know, no offense, but now Luke Rowan, one of my best friends, is now he's going to have to be the point guard against Derrick Rose and some other big-time athletes from Simeon. And Bobby fouled out. There was 18 seconds to go in the fourth quarter, and uh, the main thing was that we didn't panic. He had missed a lot of games that year. He had a back injury. He hurt his ankle late in the year, um, so it wasn't unfamiliar territory for our team. And our biggest concern was that we were going to be able to get the ball up the court without our point guard. And Luke Rowan took over the point and didn't have one turnover. He did an incredible job of, of getting us into our offense, and, and, uh, and our guys didn't pan. After another Rice foul, Hampton went to the line once again and missed both free throws. The Crusaders had another chance to tie the game. Watch his routine. It's literally just catch the ball, shoot it, catch the ball, shoot it, catch the ball, shoot it. Whereas most most guys bounce, bounce, spin, you know, do something. He's just catch right in the you know in the chamber. And he, and uh, I think I was 80% shooter or something. Uh, it, it just it's every single free throw. I think we shot over 100 free throws every single day of the week throughout the entire season. 100 if on the low end. So literally, it just became you just become a creature of habit. You do the same thing every single day. And I got to the line, I got set, and I was ready to go. I think they called a timeout right before to try to ice me. It doesn't matter. You just get to the line, get through your rotation, get, get in your rhythm, and three free throws. And all that. So I wasn't worried about it. The stakes had never been higher, and each team would have to play the extra period without their best player. After the teams traded free throws for the first three minutes of overtime, a Wolverine layup with less than a minute to go gave Simeon a 67-64 lead. Yeah. 
After missing two shots on the offensive end, Rice was forced to foul. Tim Green went to the line with 39 seconds to play and split two free throws. Down four, Rice needed to get the ball to one of their better shooters. Kevin Harrigan stepped up and hit a huge three, narrowing the Simeon lead to one. I had played about, let's say, 10 to 15 minutes of actual game time, and I hadn't taken a shot, which if you've seen any other game, that that's usually not the case. Um, so it, it had been on my mind all game, and in the back of my head, I just kept saying to myself, you're going to hit a big shot, it's coming, it's coming. So I guess you could say just having that confidence to take that shot and not hesitate being my first shot of the game, I just, I more or less, I wanted the shot. <laughs> so that's that's kind of what it came down to. I, I knew I was going to make it, so really no hesitation there. What do you remember about The Crusaders' defense stayed strong and sent the game into double overtime. Both teams continued to trade baskets in a tension-filled second overtime. Simeon led by one when Kevin Harrigan stepped to the foul line with 20 seconds to go. Matt Sequist pinned his man under the basket, got the long rebound, shot faked, the kid landed on top of him, so he got a two-shot foul, and uh, with 0 0.3 on the clock, all he had to do was make one free throw. With the score knotted up and three-tenths of a second remaining in the second overtime, Matt Sequist stepped to the free throw line for two shots. Matt was a 50% free throw shooter. Great player, um, but he was literally, literally a 50% free throw shooter, and he just had to make one. The, front, the first free throw hit the back of the rim and came out. The second free throw hit the left side of the rim, rolled all the way around, continued to roll to the right side, and then fell in. We win the game.
Brother Rice's 77-76 win that night was one of the biggest in school history, but the Crusaders weren't finished. Their next opponent was Proviso East, who they defeated at the UIC Pavilion to advance to the Elite Eight. There they came up short against eventual champion Glenbrook North, but nevertheless, it was an unforgettable run remembered by all Crusader fans. Derrick Rose once called this game the most painful loss of his career. Little did anyone know at that time what an incredible career that would be. Rose's Simeon team won the 2006 and 2007 state championships. Coach Pat Richardson retired in 2013 with over 400 wins. He's a member of numerous Hall of Fames, including those of the Illinois Basketball Coaches Association and the Chicago Catholic League. In 2010, he was inducted into the Brother Rice Circle of Champions, the highest honor a Brother Rice athlete or coach can receive. Bobby Frazier earned a basketball scholarship at the University of North Carolina, where he was a member of the Tar Heels 2009 NCAA championship team. After playing professional basketball in Bulgaria, Frazier returned to Brother Rice, where he currently serves as the head varsity basketball coach. He also was inducted into the Circle of Champions in 2015. Three years after Frazier's induction, the entire 2004-2005 team joined the Circle of Champions as well. Their 26-5 record still stands as one of the best in school history, and more importantly, on a brisk spring night in March of 2005, they gave Brother Rice basketball fans a game that no one will ever forget.